I pretty much followed what people told me, which was start out with, you know, a frequent light irrigation and work your way to a deep infrequent irrigation. Uh, the premise of all this was that if you do the deep irrigation infrequently, it's going to cause the roots to go down deep in search of water. Well, I dug out three trees this year, three established trees that were at least six years old. And what did I find? The roots did not go down past two feet, the feeder roots. When I say feeder roots, I mean the ones that actually can use the water and the food. Now I did find roots that went down deep that were anchoring. Those anchoring roots don't drink anything up. Seeing that for myself, I realized, okay, regardless of how much water I've been putting down on these trees, they're not wanting to go down deep. I'm not encouraging them to do that. They also looked very stressed out in June when I did that. Uh, you know, June is a very high heat month, very dry. All it's doing to that tree is stressing it out. You're, when you apply the water, you're giving it too much. You're saturating it, it's sitting in water. So about the middle of the process, uh, it's got an appropriate amount of water in the soil. Then by the end of the week, it's water starved. plant is not benefiting from that deep irrigation. The roots aren't down there, frankly. They don't want to be down there that deep because there's no oxygen down there. They want to stay up near the surface. Another thing to mention is fruit. If you've got a tree that is trying to hold fruit, trying to ripen fruit, and you withhold water from it during that time, the first thing it's going to do when it's stressed is drop that fruit. So I've heard many people with fig trees, they say, hey, my fruit is like mummified inside. It, it drops the fruit. It's probably because you're not watering your fig tree often enough. You're withholding water. It's going through stress and it's dropping the fruit. About mid-June, I changed up my strategy in the yard and everything that was getting an infrequent deep irrigation started getting a light daily application of water. Not only did I reduce my water bill by 30%, my consumption, but my fruit started to get to an exceptional level of quality. Figs that never developed their full potential, you know, rich, jammy, syrupy look to them. In summer, we're doing that. It looked like fall fruit. When it comes to the subtropicals, like this white sapote, this chocked full of fruit, this thing every year in the past, in June, would drop every single leaf. It did not do it this year because it got the water that it needed and could hold its leaves. So as large as this tree is, it's got a good sized trunk on it, very mature, it's been in the ground for a lot of years. It too benefited a great deal from having that frequent irrigation. You know, water is a, a limited resource here in the desert, so we need to do what we can to not waste it. I don't think anyone's trying to waste water. Certainly I wasn't. People encourage that infrequent deep watering as a water conservation practice. However, in, in doing that kind of method, I could see now in retrospect how much I was wasting. So I have to credit Tropical Central Valley, uh, his YouTube channel, with really changing my whole mindset about irrigation here. Um, it really is valuable to look at what other gardeners are doing in similar climates. Uh, he has an amazing food forest. And, you know, I learned not too long ago that his watering practices were to basically irrigate every hour, which is almost the polar opposite of what the nurseries out here tell us to do. And yet his water bill was extremely low for the amount of plants that he was nourishing with that water. Um, led me down the path of finding new resources like Gary Matsuoko, learning about clay soil, you know, about the oxygen, about the roots, 
and then also just experientially digging up plants this year, I could see it for myself. Prior to that mid-June time frame, I was irrigating these subtropicals, these mangoes. I was watering them infrequently, you know, a couple times a week, putting maybe 15 gallons down, 20 gallons down, finding that the, uh, the surface soil was drying out, finding that the plants looked like they were just completely stunted. I was seeing no new flushes of growth. Uh, they, they were in stress. And making that simple switch of watering these for 10 minutes every day, which isn't a whole lot of water, you know, that's maybe two, two gallons. I suddenly saw these mango trees that had been like frozen in time suddenly put out all this new growth, like this Malika. Uh, had done nothing from spring on. So drip irrigation uh, really does lend itself to also this kind of water application. You know, you don't need to worry about flooding, um, putting a lot of water down. You can definitely use a drip system and have a very lush yard with happy plants. So here's just another example of a plant that's really taken to that light irrigation every day. And this is the sapodilla. I had never seen flowers stick on this plant. They all would just dry off and drop. Again, because it was getting stressed in between watering. With the daily irrigation, it's now happy and it's able to hold on to those flowers despite the heat. This job at Acaba looked like death in June prior to me switching over. Switching, it's put on all this new growth. It's happy now. And this plant in particular is one that really does like moisture. So if you're um, applying, you know, a very infrequent irrigation and you've got this plant, chances are it doesn't look too good in that situation. So watering every day is just a, a summer thing, you know, and of course, since we've had rain, I've been able to turn the irrigation off as well. But as we head into cooler months, you know, it's, it's really, again, assessing that first six to eight inches of soil. Is it moist or is it dry? And adjusting your, your timings based on that. So really just wanted to share this video because a lot of you have asked me for advice on watering and what I may have told you back then isn't what I'm practicing now. So I want to put out what I've learned and what I'm doing now. Hopefully that helps you. If nothing else, you know, you can test some plants out, see what different irrigation does for your yard. Find that right balance, knowing the scientific aspect of our soils, knowing what roots do in it. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.